Hello Ibu Eva. Hello, good afternoon Mr. Wafi and yes. Mrs. Winnie. Yes. Yeah. 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 Eva already yeah. published. Um, nice to uh, um, nice to have you book, yeah. in this uh, lecture talk, Ibu uh, Mrs. Winnie. Yeah. And I'm teaching English for young learners. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for my students, and I'm so happy to have you. We can share a lot later on, and uh, some of the students also join uh, this lecture talk. So hopefully later oh. on they can ask you questions dealing with. Wow. Your experience of teaching young learners. Okay, got it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, I, I'm not. Sure, I don't know that they are students are here. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. some of the students also. As a teacher, uh, we we are we are you know flexible, adjust <laughs> right away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I so, suggest now, uh, Professor Doctor uh, Zulka Zulfikar is already here. Uh, hello, Doctor Professor. Oh. What? Okay, it's all uh, in the process of, uh, I mean, joining in our uh, event for today, yes. Professor Dr. Uh, Zulfikar is one of our uh, resource persons for, uh, I mean, uh, this, this, this series, and uh, he is from uh, Uin Araniri Aceh, uh, Indonesia, and uh, Luckily, we have uh, four uh, presenters, I mean, this is persons for today, and I have uh, one from Morocco, uh, Professor Zohra, uh, I mean, is willing to attend to our uh, talk for today. And Dr. Albert is already here, I guess. Um, where is Dr. Albert? Uh, Assalamualaikum, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Zulka, Zulfikar. I think uh, he's in uh, process joining this con. I mean this this talk. Hello, Professor uh, Zulfikar. Hello. Hello, Prof. Okay. So, uh, Ibu Mutmaina. Hello. Oh. Assalamualaikum Profesor Dr. Tekuzul Fikar Hai Prof Assalamualaikum Prof Assalamualaikum oh, Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah So uh, Welcome to our uh, lecture, I mean lecture talk, uh, lecture talk. Uh, This is series 12 And uh, today uh, we would like to invite you to talk everything about uh, ELT for, I mean, uh, related to, uh, uh, you know, uh, religious uh, literacy or uh, let's say uh, character building something or uh, moral values, something like that. So I hope uh, you are really uh, pleased to share uh, related to the topic. Hey, so Buefa, uh, is it's okay if we start now? I think uh, Pazul Vika is already here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think uh, we are going to start the, uh, the talk for today. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Good afternoon, good morning, or and good evening, everyone all over the world. Respected Rector of State Islamic Institute of Madura, Dr. Muhammad Qasim M. Agi. Honorable, the Chief of Language Development Center, Language Unit, uh, Ms. Eva Matrobianti, and which is now as uh, moderator for uh, our session. Dear brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, from Madura, the land, uh, small island, uh, the land of Seoul, is Java, Indonesia. From the Language Unit, State Islamic Institute of Madura, my name is Abdul Wafi, and I am as the committee of this uh, lecture talk. Allow me to say and to welcome you all to uh, our lecture talk series 12 by the theme building religious literacy through English language teaching in uh, 4.0. Together with our four outstanding speakers whose expertise in English language teaching, number one, we have uh, Professor Dr. Teku Zulkarnain, Zul Zulfikar SAGMED from Win Araniri Aceh, Indonesia. And the second, Professor Zohra Alanak from Les Ecoles Ihsani Al Jadida, Morocco. And number three, uh, Dr. Albert S. Pulawat. Hello, Dr. Albert. I think you are here. Okay. 
and uh, welcome to our lecture talk uh, from NUFA ASIJA University of Science and Technology Philippines. And number four, Ming Yeo Xiong. Uh, I can call uh, oh, her good. Miss Winnie. <laughs> Ming Yeo Xiong. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. Luckily, I'm, I'm okay with that. I hope, from... I wish that I could, you know, have the talent pronouncing oh. the name. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. From Taipei, uh, Wangfu Elementary School, Taiwan, we are going to improve our knowledge and insights on uh, the today's topic. Ladies and gentlemen, lecture talk is an international talk on language, education, culture, technology, universality, religion, and environment. So lecture here is the abbreviation of language, L, E, education, C, culture, T, technology, U, universality, R, religion, and E, environment. It is frequently conducted once in two weeks via Zoom meeting and YouTube live stream with the interchange interchangeable topic around lecture, language, education, culture, technology, universality, religion, and environment. Dear brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of committee, we would like to express our heartiest appreciation and thanks to every one of you who are pleased to join in our lecture talk this afternoon, especially to the distinguished research speakers, our deeply apology for the inconvenience and the lacks found during the event. Happy joining the event and good luck. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. our beloved moderator, Ms. Eva Nikmatulabganti, MPD, as the moderator of today's event. Ms. Eva? Thank you. Please, yes. Thank you, Mr. Wafi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good, yeah, to all our honorable speakers, the committee, the participants from around the world. Good afternoon, good morning, or maybe good night. Good evening, not good night. We still have two, two hours to go. Thank you very much for joining us. Today, uh, we have a topic, building spiritual literacy through English language teaching. So hopefully during the next two hours, I'm Eva Nikmatul Rabianti from YAYN Madura, can be a moderator and discussing about the spiritual literacy. In simple definitions, literacy is the ability to read and write. We uh, maybe already know some types of literacy, such as visual literacy, media literacy, cultural literacy, environmental literacy, digital literacy, and spiritual literacy. So um, being spiritually literate is very much needed in this digital era where uh, our students can get various informations that can affect their point of view as well as their feeling. So building a spiritual literacy through English language teaching is perhaps very much needed. So without a further ado, let uh, me introduce you to our distinguished um, resource speaker that will be talking about the spiritual literacy in a uh, different um, point of view. They are the first one. The one that I mentioned uh, at the first times will be the first speaker and then followed by the next and the other. Okay, the first is Professor Dr. Zulfikar uh, from Araniri State Islamic University of Banda Aceh. Good afternoon, Mr. Zulvikar. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you for uh, joining us today. And the second we have Professor Zohra Alana from Les Ecoles Ihsane uh, El Jadida, correct if I'm wrong, Morocco. Good afternoon, or is it good evening? What time is it in Morocco, Mr. Alana? Mrs. Mrs. Hello. Mrs. Alana is uh, Mrs. Alana? not in. Uh, I guess she's not here yet. Yes. Yeah. 
Ibu Nina, maybe we, you can help us. We have uh, Ibu oh, yeah. Nina here. Thank you for coming, Ibu. Yeah. See you. <laughs> so happy to meet you. Yeah, I'm so happy to meet you too. Wait me to call, sir. Okay. Um, we'll be waiting, uh, Professor Alana, and maybe we will uh, jump to Mr. Dr. Albert Pulawat from NUFA, Sika University of Science and Technology, Philippines. Good Hello, Dr. Mr. Albert. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay, and we have uh, Ming Yao Xiong. <laughs> Is it right, Mrs. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, so, yeah, she's from Taipei One Fu Elementary School, Taiwan. Okay, so let's go to our first speaker, Professor Zulfikar M.E.D. from Banda Aceh. Uh, she, he will be talking about instilling religious or spiritual values through English language teaching in Indonesia. I will give you a chance to introduce yourself, sir. Okay. Uh, Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I don't know, I'm using, I'm using this to let me, hold on. Okay. Okay. Uh, before I'm using, uh, to zoom because uh, in, in two computer because one of my computer doesn't have any very good very good connections. Uh, no, I just leave one room and I come to another room. Okay, um, first of all, uh, I would like to say Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Ibu uh, moderators, yeah. Kemudian uh, all the speakers. Um, um, uh, Bapak, uh, Dr. Albert, uh, Miss Winnie Ming Xiao. <laughs> I hope I can correct. You. I can spell your name. I can pronounce your name correctly. Okay. First of all, I'd like to introduce just brief introductions of myself. Uh, I'm uh, Teku Zulfikar. Uh, Zulfikar. We can, you can call me Zul. You can call me Teku, or you can call me with any nickname. This will be. This will be fine. I'd like to spend like 25 minutes or so mm -hmm. uh, in uh, these occasions uh, with a small talk on uh, how to implement the spirituality literacy the, or spiritual literacy uh, in the Indonesian uh, school setting or in Indonesian educational settings. Uh, I think I would like to share the screen, Ibu uh, Bisaya. I share the screen. Okay. Okay. I hope you can see my screens. Uh, I give the title at promoting spiritual literacy within EFL education in Indonesia. So for those who are in Indonesia, I think uh, my presentation will not be a uh, very new. Uh, new things to us because we know exactly what's going on in our educational context. Uh, but I think with uh, some other uh, participants or speaker from different uh, settings, uh, you may see something of how we uh, promote the spiritual literacy within our uh, educational context, especially in uh, English uh, as foreign language uh, educational system. Because it is, it is sometimes uh, it's almost no connection between spiritual or spirituality with learning the language, <laughs> learning English. I think like there is no such connections that uh, should be uh, talking about, should be talked about. But uh, while I'm uh, preparing this uh, material, I'm looking for some uh, some literatures on how spiritual literacy come into context with the language teaching. Uh, let me begin with uh, into, uh, what introducing or defining what literacy means in our context. 
And you see by Fogan 2004, it says that spiritual intelligence has multiple ways of knowing and integrating the inner life of mind and spirit with our outer life or work in the in the world. Or Amra and Dryers 2008 also mentioned that spiritual intelligence has the ability to apply, manifest, and embody spiritual resources, values, and qualities to enhance daily functioning and well-being. So spirituality is talking about inside out. I mean, what's going on? The feeling of uh, religiosity in 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 one in one uh, in one person, uh, and then that feeling of religiosity impact or shape the way they practice in the classroom. So this is pretty close connection then when we look in, in this uh, uh, field. And let me go to a different one. You see, what spirituality, why spirituality is needed in our educational context? As you see here, spirituality shape the teacher's identity. Uh, say for example, in our context as a, a Muslim community, being Muslim, the shape everything, the way we talk, it shape the way we walk, it's it shape the way we eat, it shape, we, it shape the way we behave in the community. And this is very closely connected to our career as the teachers. And also because it shape teacher's identity, it also shape classroom practices, and then it shape, it sustain the spirit of teaching. I mean, like here in Indonesia, when we, we have three objective of, 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 of education. I think that's similar to different contacts in Vietnam or, 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 or Hong Kong, Taiwan, or, or in, in Morocco, or in some other countries. I think we, we, shape, we try to shape through education our affective, the attitude, the affective of the student, the cognitive of the student, and the psychomotoric of the students. And when we talk about these issues, we can say that in Islam, for example, there are three terms of education. We can say ta'lim. Ta'lim means transferring the knowledge, uh, like teaching, and also tarbiyah. Tarbiyah means uh, nurturing the body and soul, the, the mind of the person, the mind of the students, or what we call uh, as tarbiyah, uh, nurturing uh, people. And also ta'dib. Ta'dib means shaping the behavior and the conduct of the, of the student. So that's those three things, is closely related to uh, the definitions of education that we understand here in Indonesia because we, we adopt the teachings of Islam, for example. So uh, with the spirituality, we can sustain the spirit of being teachers. I mean, like we can being become motivated as a teachers. You know, I don't think, I, I don't know, uh, you know here in Indonesia that teachings uh, like uh, civil servant, uh, teachers as a civil servant we have uh, we, we have a uh, financial guarantee, but not many, not much. We don't have any uh, high salary compared to those working in, in the big company. I don't know how, how is it there in, in Taiwan or, or in some other context, for example. But if we have strong spirituality, so we still have, we can sustain our spirit and motivation to teach because we have that kind of uh, spiritual uh, identity in, our, in ourselves. And then uh, spirituality also prevents uh, the burnout during hectic uh, times in our teachings. You know, sometimes when we think like uh, in Indonesia, we have the, the, the term called ibadah. Ibadah means like doing something for the sake of, of, of God, for the sake of the Almighty God. So when we feel it tired, then we think, oh, uh, this is for the sake of, of, of multi, uh, Almighty God. And I think it will benefit all of us because we transfer the knowledge to the student. So spirituality in that sense, very closely related to any kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, professions that we have, especially as a teachers. And in fact, as the language teachers also is very uh, closely related. So let me go briefly to uh, the educational system of Indonesia. I think uh, there are a lot in, 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 uh, in, in Google, you can just Google it, you can have here. Uh, the, the educational system in Indonesia and uh, like some other universal countries we have from uh, kindergarten and primary up to the university level. But the difference is between Indonesia and some other countries, I think, because here in Indonesia, we have two ministers or two ministry which organize or which manage the education. 
we have the Ministry of National Education. Now we call it Ministry of Education and Culture, MONEC, and we have also MORA, Ministry of Religious Affairs. Both, both, both ministries organize education respect, respectively. So uh, like here, like I am from Universitas Islam Negeri Araniri and also Pak Wapi and Ibu Eva, for example, from here in Madura, we are under the Ministry of Religious Affairs. So it's different uh, from other countries. I think that only one ministry which re, uh, regulate the, the education. And if you see here, so all the same as in some other countries, elementary, secondary school, and go up to the bachelor's diploma and professional and also a specialist as master's and doctorate degree. Uh, okay, let me go to locating spiritual literacy within the EFL teaching. Let, give me, let me give you three examples of how Indonesian education promote literacy uh, or spiritual literacy uh, uh, in Indonesian uh, educational context. First, the Indonesian curriculum itself, it contains uh, the spiritual being, the spiritual things in the, our curriculum. And also we have like, I give you the example of how our curriculum in the Department of English Education in our university, we have a course named EFIS, which is English for Islamic Studies. From that special design course, we describe and we shape the student's spirituality and also we teach students how uh, everything about education and about Islam. And also, uh, I give you an example of mandatory curriculum content in, in modern Islamic boarding schools. Where in boarding schools, there are uh, English. I mean, there are English subjects which, which are taught, which are taught in different uh, 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 strategies, for example. So I, give, I would like to go with these three issues of how we in Indonesia uh, develop or promote uh, the spiritual well-being of, of uh, our students or promoting spiritual uh, literacy. Let's see here. This is our curriculum. We go up from 1945 up to the last curriculum, uh, 2013. And in 2013, we really have a kind of um, spiritual things there where moral educations or moral values are really uh, emphasized in the uh, K-13 curriculum. Let's see here, for example, if you see the 2013 curriculum, we have religious, productive, and innovative uh, uh, kind of thing that we, we have that. Uh, in uh, as the contents of the curriculum. So the curriculum itself tell us to include a kind of uh, spiritual introductions or to introduce the spiritual literacy to all the students. So although we learn the language, we learn English language or EFL, English as a foreign language, but also we, we uh, what we call it, we implement or instill the spiritual literacy to the student. Let's see here, this is a kind of lesson plan in our education. You see, in the orientations, a perception and motivation that it takes like 10 to 15 minutes during the first uh, 10 minutes of teachings, uh, we have this kind of activities that we need all teachers to do actually yeah, during their teaching. First, the teachers should greet the student and do the ice breaking activities. Students recite some prayers prior to actual uh, learning. And also, um, and then the teachers introduce the lessons. The teacher asks some question related to the learning material, and the teachers uh, introduce or introduce the objective of the lesson. So, in the first five minutes or so in our instructional process, we have this kind of uh, activities, praying together. I mean, that's kind of how we instill the literacy, uh, how we promote spiritual literacy. Uh, in uh, our educational system. And let me move on into uh, this one is our course. We have the, this course in uh, our uh, curriculum in the English education curriculum, uh, EFIS, we call it EFIS, which is English for Islamic studies. And the course description is that uh, the course introduced children with important issues in the Islamic societies it also highlights important pillars in Islam and how, how these pillars are maintained and sustained. Uh, and part of the uh, uh, modules I think uh, we have here 
introducing Islamic values to students through discussions and discussions of English texts, what is Islam, its teaching and its follower, the principle of faith, and then Islam and non-Muslim in the millennial era, uh, who is more tolerant among those believers. So those kind of uh, topics are introduced in uh, our FS courses. So this is a very special design courses in, uh, in my university for English department, and I don't know whether it's applied to different university, uh, but I, I do believe that all uh, university under the Ministry of Religious Affair has got something to do with this kind of uh, courses, uh, with different name, of course, maybe. Maybe later FI and Ibu and Pawafi can introduce us, can explain to us whether we uh, have this kind of, uh, well, whether they have this kind of subjects or not in their teaching, uh, in their curriculum. And let's see in, in boarding schools, what's going on in boarding school? Uh, uh, boarding school, uh, modern Islamic boarding schools implements uh, integrated curriculum. They are teaching Arabic, they are teaching general subject, they are teaching Islamic courses, they are teaching English, there's also they are teaching extracurricular. And in fact, for uh, boarding schools, English is a mandatory, uh, a mandatory subject. So one of the functions of uh, boarding school is uh, introducing students uh, and improving student competence in English and Arabic, and also in Islamic uh, studies in some other, uh, in, in Islamic studies as general. And also, let me go to this one. Okay, see, let's see the, the, the boarding schools, they have a curriculum. Uh, first, the boarding school teach English in integrated, using the integrated skills of teaching English. Uh, all English are taught uh, with the four skills, uh, no isolations in it, There's a, all four skills are taught, but they emphasize on the conversations, the daily conversations. I mean, emphasizing on daily conversation and also emphasizing on English speech. So the student in the boarding school are shaped or trained to be able to give speech in English. And in, in this sense, uh, we the, the boarding school have tried to promote uh, the spiritual literacy using uh, or, or through uh, the EFL education using the English speech. I mean, like they, they have to, to preach, giving the, uh, what we call it, deliver the talk in English about Islam, but they use English. I mean, giving the talk in, about Islam using English. And also they have to use English uh, in teachings, uh, uh, Islamic, they, they use English in teaching the Islamic subject. There's in, in, in some, uh, topic of Islam in Islamic uh, uh, education, for example, they, they use English and also English writing specializing on Islamic topics. So this the way the, the boarding school, especially in Indonesia, especially in Aceh and in, uh, in Indonesia as, as a whole, they use English as a medium. And in fact, it's a mandatory subject for the student to learn and it's a medium for them to improve their uh, language skill. All right, I'll, I think my time is approaching. I have like another four or five minutes here. Uh, it's my schedule to 1.40. And I have, I think, uh, one more slide uh, to, to talk about. Um, as you see, as a spirituality shapes teacher identity in which teacher will be motivated to teach. That's one thing. And I, I do believe uh, we have in each culture from what, from any religious perspective, we have the spiritual being behind us that back us up um, to do good things, right? So in teaching in any religion, they, we are taught to, to with the spiritual being there somewhere there so that we are uh, motivated to, to do good things. And also you have our Indonesian curriculum gives spaces for spiritual, spiritual literacy to develop, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in fact, our uh, K-13 curriculum or curriculum 2013 uh, emphasize on the, the moral behavior, the shaping of the, mo of the student moral uh, and the shaping of student attitude with some uh, methods and also contents of the, of the learning. And also uh, we see spiritual literacy is implemented well in curriculum like in K-13, taught through specific courses like in uh, the example of English for Islamic studies in my department, 
and also integrated in instructional process like in the in the boarding school. So uh, to wrap up my uh, my discussions uh, to come, to return to my topic, which is in, uh, in implementing a spiritual literacy in AFL educations, I give like three example here that a spiritual identity is important. Spiritual literacy is important because it shaped teachers' identity, or and also. Uh, our government have implemented in the, our national curriculum, and also like we, I give a, a very specific information uh, example. Like in in my department, we have uh, the course uh, the the course of the subject called EFIS, English for Islamic Studies, and also uh, English is a mandatory subject in uh, in a boarding school. Where in boarding school, students learn how to uh, how to be to become a good Muslim or uh, Muslim preachers and learns not only uh, general subject, but they also learns uh, Islamic education. I think uh, that's it. Thank you. Comment and criticisms later on and uh, uh, Eva and also all the speakers. Uh, I would like to have to excuse myself later on around 2.15. I mentioned to Pawafi because I have uh, an emergency yes. meeting with the rector. So, uh, excuse us or you all uh, around 2:15. I would like to leave the the meetings, and I hope I can uh, I can be here, join all of you uh, during your presentations. Uh, Miss Winnie and Dr. Albert, uh, good luck to all of us. If I and I return to you, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Zulvika. Um. Uh, very interested in your uh, statement that um, being spiritual literate can prevent us from being burning out while we are teaching. Yeah, because if we believe that uh, teaching is also ibadah, maybe even though we are too tired of such a thing, we still can uh, remember that the reward is not from human only, but also from God. Okay, so uh, we have a question from Mr. Muhammad Rosid from Bandung to Mr. Sulfikar. Okay. The first question is, I'm teaching English among Arabic literature students. How can you suggest my students to study English beside their core studies in Arabic? Maybe you have personal uh, experience feeling <laughs> with uh, motivating students. Okay, so thank you for, for the questions. Yeah, it's it's tough question actually, Papa, because when we encourage students, non-English students, to study English, I mean they can mention that uh, they don't like English, for example, because they say, they can say that if they like English at the first place, they have come to English department rather than to Arabic department. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, um, I have example. I have some example of my student mm -hmm. here in uh, with Araniri. In English department, most or not the majority of the students are taking two courses, two department. One, say for example, in Usuluddin or learning the theology, and uh, one in, in in art, for example, and the other one in English education. And they mentioned that when I asked them why do you, why do you bother why do you bother yourself taking English department while you are studying in in different. Uh, department right now and they said that they need english as the tool uh, as the tool to disseminate their knowledge getting from gain from different uh, department say for example one of my students uh they're studying theology uh the usuluddin uh, and then uh about tafsir hadith for example in fact tafsir hadith and in, and then he took uh she took uh, in, uh english department as well and when I asked that question, she mentioned that I can use my English skill to uh, disseminate my knowledge of, of uh, Islamic teaching, for example. And then uh, she can apply for scholarship overseas and studying overseas uh, with the English with English skills, but doing some other doing some other taking some other measures. So uh, I think one way to uh, to motivate students to learn English is that we mentioned that English is only a tool. If you have a tool, 
no matter what you learn, you can use that tool. You can use the tool to disseminate your ideas. You know, you know if you want to, uh, for example, like, like myself, um, I'm, I'm a professor right now, alhamdulillah, but the way to get that professor, no matter what department we are, we have to get English because we have to publish in international recognized journal, you know? So English is a tool. So I can, maybe we can tell the student or whatever department they are, just say that if you want to learn English, you learn the tool because the prophet also say, if you want to get safe from, from people, please learn their language. You know, so you have to be aware of their language. So I think Nanti Bapa, if you can, you can tell your students, uh, you can focus on on your own uh, interest, but then learn English as a tool because with the tool you can go everywhere and also uh, promote yourself. I think that's the answer, Ibu. Yeah. I hope Nanti Winnie and uh, Pak Albert can also add to my answer. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Zulfikar, and okay. hope that can answer Mr. Muhammad Rosid's questions. And I do agree with you, sir. Mm -hmm. If we have the right tools, so we can do right, uh, we can do things better. Yeah. Okay, we also have a question from Mr. Sari Agung Sucahyo to Mr. Zulfikar. Are there any required skills under spiritual literacy in the context of EFL teaching and learning? Okay. Um... I don't think, Bapa, because uh, teaching literacy is not, we don't have one subject to teach literacy. And uh, teaching, uh, uh, sorry, spiritual literacy. Uh, implementing spiritual literacy to the student is not through one particular subject, but it's embedded in, in, in many other subjects. So like I, I, I mentioned earlier, we have the FIS, English for Islamic Studies uh, courses in our department. Uh, in, in that subject, we teach varieties of topics uh, uh, regarding Islam, for example, and that all also focus on uh, the literacy, uh, or, or spiritual literacy. And also, for example, when we are teaching reading, uh, we can insert that uh, reading text, uh, talking about uh, Islamic teachings a bit, uh, talking about the history of the prophet talking about the islamic principle for example when we are teaching reading comprehension two on reading comprehension three for example uh, so in in that case we already integrate the implementation of the promotions of uh, spiritual literacy in those particular subjects so i don't think we have a special uh, skill to improve our uh, spiritual literacy all right yeah yeah um, maybe we can use the something like authentic materials or contextual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think teaching about tolerance, yeah. as you said, Professor, I think mm -hmm. is also very important nowadays. Yeah, mm -hmm. because in this multilingual uh, society and also the digital informations where the digital era where uh, various informations can um, come to the students as easy as uh, uh, a collapse, maybe some, yeah, teaching about tolerance yes. is um, very much needed in, in a context, yeah, in a context. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you. That's, uh, um, oh, we have another question. Is it okay, sir? It's okay. It's Another okay. two questions. Okay. As long as the time is alone, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Maybe uh, at two, yeah. You have to leave at two, but we still have a little time. This is yes. from Ibu Rita and Mr. Ibn Hajar. The first one is Do you, do you think that integrating Islamic values in reading texts will increase students' spiritual literacy? I think you already mentioned previously yes. about this, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. from Ibn Hajar, in Indonesian university, there are some Islamic majorities, such as Islamic, Islamic economics, law, etc. For the next, maybe we need to consider about Islamic English majority. I hope some comments about this issue from Professor Suru Vika. Okay. I think here, in Indonesia University, we there are some Islamic majorities such as Islamic economics, Islamic law, or like mm. maybe we need to consider about Islamic English majority. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know uh, whether it's such things as Islamic uh, English uh, major because language 
is without religion, right? <laughs> so language is language. I mean, like uh, there is no religion for the language. So every, language is a tool. It's different uh, from Islamic economics because the, mm. uh, the economy, we got the theory of economics. So there, there are Islamic teaching, the, the, the theory of Islamic uh, economics. So there are there in, in Islamic teaching. And also uh, we have uh, like uh, Islamic law, of course, because uh, Islam as religion, they got the law. But language, I don't think there are uh, Islamic English because English is English. No matter who spoke, who speak English, English is without religion. So language yeah. is, is without religion. So I don't think there is a need for uh, for Islamic English majors because uh, English is English because there's no uh, theory of English. You know? so, so it's different um, from uh, a, a law or economic because Islam in in its own they have it has the, the theory on Islamic law. And also Islamic economic, Islamic, uh, what Islamic economics. So, uh, to answer your question about Ibn Hajar, I don't think we need to have uh, we need to have a kind of measures that is Islamic English. English is English, so we may insert a particular uh, courses or subject to help the students learn about Islam through English language. Uh, I think that's that's all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do agree with you, sir. Yes. Uh, English yes, is the, the tools, the language, and Islam is religion. So, yeah, they may connect each other, but yes. yeah, there are things that uh, we can force to to have. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, right, Mr. Zulfikar, uh, for your great presentations and for the great discussions too. And Mr. Muhammad Rosid, Rosid, uh, also. Uh, wishes that you tell her his best regard to Professor mm, yeah. Eckhart. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. I'll do inshallah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Hope we can meet again in uh, another great um, event. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sulfika. Now we move to Mrs. Oh, Mr. Mr. We don't have Mrs. Alana, do Mr. Mrs. Alana here? Oh, Dr. Alana. I think uh, she's not here, ma'am. So you okay. can okay. come so to we, we can, Miss uh, Winnie. Come to Mingyo. Oh, so Mr. Boy, Albert? Boy, Mr. Boy, Mr. Boy, Albert? Girl, boy, girl. Oh, so it's better. Mrs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who should do first? Ah, oh, yeah. Let's go back to the schedule. Let's, <laughs> Let's have uh, Mr. Albert uh, Bulawat from Philippines. He will be uh, presenting about empowering character building through English language teaching in Philippines. Yes, hello, yeah. madam. Good afternoon. Oh. Good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Albert. Can you hear me clear and loud? Right. Yes, we can hear you clearly, right. sir. All right, so allow me to first share my screen for a moment before I begin. Okay, can you now guys see my screen? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Visible. Okay, okay, thank you so much. By the way, I'm Dr. Bulawat and I'm from the Philippines. I am currently a, an English teacher in, a, in the university. And at the same time, I am the campus head of the NUST Philippines. And for this session, and by the way, let me thank Dr. Musmaina, a very good friend of mine, for inviting me to be with you this afternoon. And I would like to greet, of course, uh, Madam, uh, Madam Win Min Yao. Hi, Madam. Good afternoon. And the other uh, speakers. Hi. And to the moderators, of course. Now, let me share with you my insights on um, building empowering characters. And uh, let me just uh, share with you that in the Philippines, we do not directly teach religion. It's in the law that no schools should teach religion directly unless mm -hmm is a religious school. So if you if you are working in a, in a public school or a, a school that is not uh, sectarian, no teachers should teach religion. So we are more on teaching character rather than religion, okay? But those two are still the same because um, 
what God wants is not a person who speaks of godly scriptures, but a person who treats people better, people well, and people fairly, right? It's, it's more of, you know, it's better to be good to people than posting uh, scriptures verses on Facebook or whatsoever, all right? So I'll be discussing with you using literature to develop sensitivity to life's values. How can we empower people? How can we empower our students with literature? Because definitely it would be very difficult to decipher how we could teach character in English. I mean, can you teach, how can you in directly teach character when your lesson is pronoun and when your lesson is verb and when your lesson is adjective? I, I, for adjective, that could be possible, but what about for other, other uh, topics in English? That could be very, very difficult. So one way in the Philippines, what we do is we, we do not teach grammar in isolation. We always insert literature because that's where we could only infuse values. Although in some instances, like teaching adjectives, we could teach character to our students, but most of the topics in English are not really into character teaching. So we, we, we get to infuse literature as a springboard and as a way we could inculcate character, okay? Let me share with you one good quotation I found, and it says, education isn't about reading, writing, and arithmetic, the three R's. It's also about life citizenship and the value of being a good person. It's not really about being so much spiritual. It's about being a good person. Uh, not everyone, I, I think, believe in religion. No? So, so it would be very best to teach, just teach people to be good. And when a school teaches these things, a child world and perhaps the world around us will begin to change. If everyone is good, there's no more war, right? Nah, the differences will be will become similarities like that. All right. Now let me <clears throat> let me tell you the what. You know what what is it that we need to teach character? All right. We need we need values to build a morally upright society that will in turn contribute to healthy relationships and help to form our emotional identities with care and courage. What we need now is not a person who, who possesses so much of intelligence, but a person who possesses a balance of intelligence and character. What about what kind of character is it? It should be a good character, morally upright society. Morally upright society means that we respect human dignity. We respect differences. We respect your opinion, my opinion, your religion, my religion. There, there is respect. There is harmony. And we, we, we can only teach that if we inculcate values, we instill values among our students with, of course, literature. Next, where? Where should values be taught? Should it be taught at home alone? Should it be taught by the teachers alone? My answer would be both the home and the school are responsible for inculcating core moral values such as respect, responsibility, fairness, trustworthiness, and citizenship, and many other values, right? Our parents could teach us the foundation of these values and teachers could just reinforce them. Teachers cannot teach values. They simply reinforce. They simply modify. Somewhat there is a modification on what the, on, on what the students learn from home, right? But it's basically begin with home, with the parents, and teachers just reinforce. And we do this by, in, yeah, in, in, in by choosing the best literary piece that teaches, no? That teaches these lessons, that teaches these values. So it's a matter of carefully selecting what literary piece could be best used to, in order to embody and in, inculcate these values to our students. So remember, huh? it, it begins from home and be reinforced in school. When? When should we teach this? When should we inculcate values? Should it be taught in the later part of our, of our life or, or should it be taught at the beginning of when the child steps into school or steps out of the real world? When? We need to start early with the young because we continue to hear about behavioral disorders, increased violence and crime activities by and among the young. And this is quite a pitiful shame, right? What I mean here is, we need to teach youngsters, as, as young, young as they are, the good values. So they would carry those values when they grow up. It's very difficult to alter a college student's behavior. It's very difficult to alter a senior high school student's behavior. It's very difficult to alter a high school student's behavior, right? Because they, they are already been, they have they has already been uh, 
uh, predetermined. They are, they, are, they are being inculcated and they are part of the system already. So what we can only do now is just to modify, but not really to completely alter. So what do we do is uh, we begin teaching values among our kids, among our students. So if we are teaching kids, better to not teach English in isolation. Always try to, to incorporate literature, could be a poem, a song, a short story, a novel, that, that would teach these children values that they need in order to become a good citizen of their community or the country, right? Now, did you know that through literature, young people in school can be taught to be more sensitive and tolerant of otherness? This is based on the research to stand up for justice and simply to be more human, wholesome, and responsible members of society. Because when they read, they don't just simply read, no? They process, they process the information, they reflect. What's important is they reflect. So it's a matter of processing, how well the teacher could process the literary piece. Because no matter how good the literary piece would be, if the teacher cannot process it very well, that's that's gonna be useless, all right? So it's a matter of, 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 of having the mastery of the art of questioning, the art of processing literary pieces and encouraging students to reflect on what they have read, right? Now, using literature, this is my main topic, to develop sensitivity to life's values. Let me share with you some, not all, some, some ways we can better make use of literature as a springboard and as part of our lesson in, in ESL classrooms in order to teach somewhat spirituality, but I'd like to emphasize character good moral character, right? We could use symbols to represent values in literary text. Students are very visual, right? If they are just going to read a plain text, they would find it boring. What we can do is we have to symbolize through illustrations or whatsoever, the values being embodied in that particular literary piece or the values that the literary piece would want the students to learn from it, all right? Before we get into the grammar lesson, let's process first the literary piece. And we have to make use of symbols. Like how could you symbolize love from a literary piece? Uh, compassion, responsibility, right? Students should have a clear grasp of these values for them to understand that these particular values can really be applied in real life. And these are not just abstract ideas that after they learn it, they forget it. Okay, so we make use of, we may, we may use symbols to represent values in literary texts. Also, we have to explore values expressed in familiar tales and folklore. It's very difficult to teach students values from a certain literary piece that they cannot relate with, right? So begin, if you're teaching kids, of course, you have to begin with stories that they could relate with, something that happened in the community, something that happened perhaps in the school, something that happened perhaps in, the, in their country, something that they could really relate to, no? So we have to make use of these folk tales, folk songs, right? Poetries that are written by their ancestors. And, and from here, we could, they could reflect what kind of ancestors did I have? What kind of people do we have back then? What kind of, of family did I, did I come from? Something like that. So, so you give them time to reflect on what, on, on, on their origin, on something that they could relate to, okay? So we, we have to make use of these things. Like in the Philippines, uh, at the very young age, we teach students folk songs. We, we always begin with songs, no? We begin with songs because from there they can learn the kind of life that we had before, the, the values that we possess, something like that, okay? So we make use of them. I, I'm very sure you have your own folk tales in your community. You, can, you could use them as long as they teach lessons, okay? and personalizing values expressed in literature. Your students should see someone who embodies, who possesses these values. Perhaps you could ask them, somebody to think of some, someone who possesses a certain characteristics inculcated or, or, or expressed in certain literary piece, right? Because they have to have a model. They have to have a role model. And mind you, the best role model should be the teacher. If we want, to, to teach our students love, compassion, responsibility, those values must be reflected upon us. And we must possess those values. Again, students are so visual that they imitate, they love imitating, and so they need the role models, okay? 
And we could also ask them to make posters that represent values and virtues from the literary piece. This one way of addressing uh, uh, individual differences and different learning styles, you know, children learn, some children would learn best when they create their own symbols. When teachers do not give them symbols, but the students create their own symbols because that's, that's where they learn better, that's where they learn best. So perhaps you could ask them to make a poster, a symbol that, that symbolizes their understanding or the values expressed in the, in the literary, text, uh, literary text they they read, they dealt with. No? And then you could also ask them to list values you know, to match the poster that they read because you have to, of course, verify in which part of the text was these values can be found. All right, so you could actually ha have them enumerate values that that really match the poster that they read, just to make sure that they are not uh, uh, they they are not making you gullible of, of what they are doing, correct? And then classification of characters and events in terms of values. You you might want to want to clarify what makes this person in the uh, character in the literary piece a good person and a bad person. You know, not all bad person are really bad. Sometimes in, in, the, in, in, in a story, characters make actions or do actions or perform something out of circumstances. So you have to teach your, our students that not all people uh, committing bad actions are innately bad. So they won't misconstrue people who are doing bad things are really bad persons, or correct? We just give them the, the idea of openness, of understanding, but of course, not in a sense and to the extent that they will be doing bad things and then justify later on that they are not bad. But what I mean here is to not to avoid, to, to let them avoid uh, judging people uh, abruptly, okay? So from there, they have to be critical. They have to analyze why did this person perform this action? And can this person be considered a bad person? All right, so you, they have to classify. Which one is bad? Which one is good? What makes this bad? What makes this good? Something like that. And reflect, of course. The key, the key here is the reflection. They have to reflect on everything that they read. Okay? Now, we're not saying, we're not suggesting that children's literature or whatever literature or reading, reading it is would lead directly to character development. Ordinarily, Fiction does not intend to teach something specific, such as being honest, face dividend. We're not, we're not telling you that using liter literature could actually and could definitely teach you values. So what I'm saying here is, no, what I'm saying here is there are part of us who would want, who would learn something from, from experiences of characters, be it fiction or not fiction. As long as we could reflect on it there would be something in us that would be touched, that would be tapped. And from there, at least a little of that we could learn, correct? Not, it, may, it, it may not be directly, it may not, it may not be wholly, fully, correct? That, that we learn everything from the literary piece, but at least we are given pers a different perspective. We are giving our students different perspective that these values exist, that at some point in your life, you will encounter the same situation the same scenario where you could apply these values or where these values could be learned, all right? So uh, what we want our students to, to, to realize is that, and, and what, what teachers should, should be doing is that we have to be sensitive in terms of uh, content, no? in terms of different issues, correct? We are opening their eyes. We are opening our students' eyes of the content and sensitive issues in our society. Okay, in order to let them decipher and discern what makes a good person, what makes a bad person. As, and as teachers, it is our responsibility to make use of the best material that could actually let these students learn, okay, the, the, the content and sensitive issues. It's a matter of processing. At the same time, we are also teaching them make the right decisions and actions. Being good is, is is a decision, being bad is also a decision. All of these are choices, even happiness. Happiness is a choice. But there are circumstances, of course, that would lead us to, to, to decide otherwise. But regardless, still, it is all a matter of choice, correct? Now, I would like to end my presentation by reminding everyone that the values are not caught, no matter how good the teacher is, no matter how good the literary pieces would be, Values are not values are caught, not 
thought. We cannot teach values. We can only show our students these values and it's for them to what? To master them, to, 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 to get them, to realize them, all right? So again, but what's important is we are trying our best to, to make our students more what? Values-oriented individuals, okay? But again, although values are taught, not taught, we teachers can make a difference. That would be all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Albert, for the very enlightening presentation. <laughs> okay, um, things that I underline from uh, your presentation, uh, correct if I'm wrong. Yes. Um, if teacher involve values in their teaching and materials, surely there will be no war and crime and everyone can live under the same sun peacefully. And um, yes, yes. your last, yes, your, in your last statement, you said that um, we can make the difference. This is what I believe um, since I decided to be a teacher, a lecturer that teacher or lecturer can change the world from our classroom because um, the, the students will be the citizens that will go to the society. And uh, if we teach values, if we teach values in a simple way as what you say, to uh, sharing a comic that tell them to be good to their friend, to their parents, or pay tax, honestly, then yeah, they can change the world. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. let's go to the questions. Let's see the chat box. Um, we have Mr. Wafi commenting your presentations. Amazing opening, dear. Uh, Professor Albert, to give us a new insight on teaching activities in Philippines. In Philippines, not teaching religion specifically, unless you are a religious teacher. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, we have a very long um, comments and questions from again, Mr. Muhammad Rasid. Thank you for very active in our discussion, sir. Okay, warm welcome from Bandung, West Java. I'm teaching in undergraduate university in regard to the role of literature to infuse values and build character to students. From my minimal reading of Western philosophy, sorry, I remember Aristotle speaking about catharsis. I don't know in English, but would you care the, to give from literature studies perspective? Problems such as mimesis, paradigm, drama, tragedy. Ah, thank you very much. And another one, is English the official language of the Philippines? Okay, uh, let me address that. Thank you, sir, for asking. No, English is not our uh, first language, but yes, it is an official language according to law. It is our second language. It is not our mother tongue, but we are all required to speak English in school. So it's part of our it has an official status in the country that it, it, it is to be used in academe and of course in the government. That's why that's why we get to you know we get to be acquainted with English as early as kindergarten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the earlier you you learn English, then usually you become more fluent. Fluent. Um what about the, the previous questions from Mr. Muhammad Rosid about uh, using drama? Uh, but would you care to give from literature studies perspective from such as paradigm? Okay, uh, you know what? I don't know if, if this is applicable for the college students or for the older ones, but uh, I, one thing, I, I think there was, there was an instance, let me, let me just share a story to address the question. There was an instance where I, I discourage my students to use a certain book in our, in our class, in my English 8 class, because there was a story there that was so tragic that a brother killed his brother because of jealousy of the wife. I mean, uh, you know, could you just imagine if your students would 
be reading a, a very tragic, uh, a very tragic story that a brother killed a brother because of jealousy. That's so that's so improper and unbecoming of a brother, right? So I think what what would I share with you, my dear participants, is that we have to level we have to level the the literary piece that we are using to the level we have to I mean to equal the level of the literary piece that we are using and the great level of our students if. If that is for, for the more mature individuals, that could be better because, that, that, because they are quite mature to, to, to absorb things positively and negatively. They, have, they could sort, actually, they could sort out things. But for younger ones, I think we, have, we, we are not so encouraged to be opening their eyes to more tragic uh, literary pieces or to, to a literary piece that does not teach, I mean, that give them ideas of, of violence, of tragedy, something like that, sir. I don't know if I'm addressing your question, but what I'm telling here is we have to choose carefully whatever mm -hmm. genre is that. Yes, you can teach, you can teach uh, drama so they could role play, at least they, they could apply, uh, what else? They could use poetry, so at least they could memorize, and later on they could recall, oh, these are the values based on the poem, something like that. You also teach any, any sort of, of literary pieces, as long as you choose them carefully, sir. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think that the only problem that we encounter in, in, in inculcating literature, madam, my dear sir, my dear participants, is that teachers choose literary pieces based on their uh, based on what they like to teach, not based on what the students would like to learn. Did, I think we need to change our idea and mindset is that we are teaching things that we want to teach. No, we are teaching things that our students want because in that way they would be more interested to learn if what they are learning are the things that they are they are interested in. Yes. Yes, you're right. So um, the skill of choosing the right materials yes. that, that match the student's level and also the learning objective is also mm -hmm. a very important skill to have by a teacher. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question from Mr. Sari Agung Suchahyo. How, how, how do how to measure character to find out whether or not it is well integrated in EFL teaching? A very nice question. One thing I would yeah. like to share with you, my dear participants, we do not measure character. We cannot measure character and don't make characters. Yes, we have to, we have to accept the fact that we don't, grade, we don't give credits to characters. I mean, these do not reflect in, in giving grades among our students. Teaching character is a long-term journey. We can only realize that we were able to inculcate character building in our lessons when our students become part of a society and they become good member of society. It cannot be measured in one hour class where after teaching this, our students become a sudden a good individual, a good child, you know? If we are teaching bad, bad students, uh, with, with values and suddenly they become good. It's very impossible. This cannot be measured in one hour, in one week, or in a year. This is a long-term journey. It's a long-term battle, I believe. And like what I've said, uh, we really, there's no, you know, there's, there is no a particular rubric that we could use that could actually and definitely uh, measure whether we have integrated character building in EFL teaching. That's it, it, it is possible, but I, I don't think one can really be so successful in doing that in one, one year and in a very short uh, period of time. Yes. The character itself maybe cannot be measured in terms of score. Yes. But yeah, but maybe you can score the reading comprehensions if we, yes, we exactly. use uh, books or uh, of text or text but the the side effect of uh, giving the the what is it the the literature in a specific um context they learn yes. 
the values, they learn the values, not only the language, not only the, the four language skill. Yeah. And ah, what are the books that you, what are the drama or books that you usually ask your students to read? This is a question from Remy. Yes, I'm, we, I don't know if you've seen or, or you've checked uh, a certain curriculum guide from the Philippines, but usually these are all prescribed by the government. Yeah, uh, the reading materials that we give to our students are prescribed, but we are, we, we may modify, but we modify in a way that we look for a similar story, or it may not be as tragic as uh, what, what the curriculum offers, but something that could, em could still embody the values given or expressed in a certain uh, offered, uh, literary piece. Like what I mentioned a while ago, there was a time I discouraged my students to read a certain piece. I, 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 I just changed it. But what we do, like what I said a while ago, uh, there's no specific author, there's no specific title. You can choose of any stories that you can, that you that you know, that you can you can get from sources. No, I cannot give you actually one. I just I just share you one. If you if you are familiar with the Aged Mother, it's a Japanese folk tale. Uh, it's about yeah, it's 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 entitled uh, the Aged Mother. It's a very nice or short story. Whereas it, it's actually in our curriculum. It's a Japanese folk tale, but it's embodied in our curriculum. How is it possible? It's very possible. Oh, no, my, my point here is, Madam, is it depends on you. It depends on you. It depends on what you think your students need. No, If you think your students need to improve their values in a sense that they have to become more responsible individuals or, or children or students, then you can think of a story that teaches responsibility something like that yeah. i really cannot recommend but uh it's on your discretion as long as it matches the level of your student i hope i'm clear with that mom Rennie. <laughs> yeah okay yeah. hope uh that can inspire mrs Rennie to choose the right uh drama or books to give to their students and mr wafi also agree with you that um someone characters cannot be measured in an hour classroom activities. It's a long-term process. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Albert. Mr. Oh, sorry, Professor sure. Albert. So uh, I believe that the audience um, still want to ask you a lot of questions, but we are so sorry. We have a limited time and right. we still have to go to Mrs. Winnie. Thank you very much, Mr. Albert. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> this is Winnie. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here and listening to this great, I mean, the sharing and speeches. Uh, I think this is uh, why we are here, learning from each other. Yeah. And I think I'm, uh, originally, I think I'm the speaker I'm going to present, but actually I'm a learner. <laughs> As a teacher, <laughs> I think it's a lifelong learner. So thank you yeah. so much for inviting me here. Uh, from the conversation, I really learned uh, something that uh, we are different teaching in a different place. But I think we share some like a uh, uh, quality. For example, we talk about, um, you know, teacher. So in my culture, teacher is really important. We value the teacher. And also teaching English in my country is a little different from your country. For example, you mentioned about Indonesia, you have a religion uh, classes in English, Islamic English, right? Yeah, uh, my country is a similar like a Philippine, Dr. Albert Sher. So uh, we have a freedom to choose a religion. Yeah, you, uh, in my country, Buddhism and Catholic and Christian, and we have a some Muslim, yeah. And uh, you are free to choose. But in our uh, school, we are public school. It's not a, you know, uh, it's uh, not allowed to preach. So, so teacher, no matter your personal religion, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, preach uh, any religion to your uh, classroom. So you cannot bring anything uh, religion to your classroom. So, uh, so that's the different part about in uh, 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 from us. Yeah, and interesting to know that. <laughs> And also talking about the teaching English in also different story. In my country, English is a foreign language, which means that English is only a school subject. We teach in a school. 
But uh, most of the student, even the community parents, they don't speak English. So which means uh, there are some challenges for a uh, teacher teaching in English in Taiwan. Okay, so now I would like to begin. Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, invite you to come to my school. So like I say, today we are talking about teaching value uh, to our students. But I think in, in my country, in my country, uh, value comes from teacher. I, I'm so happy that Dr. Albert also say that value are not, uh, you know, uh, you know, taught. It's a, uh, you know, it, you just they just learn from teacher. So, uh, like I say, English is a foreign language. So most of the value we will be learning, and you know, uh, uh, our student will be learn from teacher. Yeah, and talking about the other value. Uh, probably, I mean, in terms of uh, English, we cannot do much, but they uh, definitely, if we want to teach the kid value, you know, uh, the world, we need to value the student. We, if we want to teach the kids respect the world, respect other, as a teacher, we need to build a relationship, respect uh, the student in our classroom. So first, I would like to share, uh, in our culture, September 28th is the Teacher's Day. So my school uh, making a video, pay respect to hardworking teachers. So uh, I will try to share, let me share my screen, okay? And also I would like to pay respect to all of you, <laughs> even we are in different country, okay? And also you can take a look about my school, my classroom. Is that uh, audible? Sorry? Yes, audible okay. and visible. Okay, so this is my school. Uh, we call Wonderful Teacher. This is my school. Uh, as a teacher, you have uh, some morning duty. Guard the student. We have a morning chore in our school. The oh. teacher needs to. <laughs> yeah, these are some teachers working in the office. Sorry, it's Mandarin. <laughs> you can see, take a look about our classroom look like. Yeah, so this is the morning chores. Uh, we have a morning chore in our school. What's the song about? Sorry? The song, the song about oh. <laughs> oh yeah, let's say something, you know, you are so kind, teacher, it's a you know, dedication, you are our model, thank you for being with us, and now teacher say, let's sing for you. I wish you could teach me Taiwan language. Yeah, yeah I think in Taiwan, teachers uh, well are highly respected. But it's up to how you do respect your, your job. There are definitely are some teachers they are not, you know, uh, doing and uh, you know, respecting themselves. Definitely the parents will respect you. Well. So we have a lunch duty. So we don't have a cafeteria. The kids will eat in the classroom. That's right. So yeah, which means teacher also do some, you know, not only teaching. Actually, some teachers say they are the parents at home, at school. So that's why I mean, we're talking about the value. Yeah, I totally agree with Dr. Albert. We we don't teach them. They we just you know there. They learn from us. <laughs> yeah. How you teach, how you treat them. That's the value. So respecting teacher, you are our model. We learn from you. We also have an international school teacher. That's me. <laughs> you can see my classroom. Our classroom is quite different. So next, I'm gonna do show you how we learn English in my country. They, they are after school. We need to like a board. That is me. Thank you, teacher. Especially COVID-19. So this is a paid a tribute to all the teachers around the world, no matter you where they come from. And this is a, a ceremony we we will do. 
in the beginning of the class and also after the class, the students will like a stand up and salute and say thank you, teacher. Yeah, so so this is kind of a uh, routine and uh, uh, look like what looked like in my school. And like as I mentioned that uh, in Taiwan, English is not a second language; it's a foreign language. We we facing a, a challenge that our student, even I I think not student, even most of the adult, the environment is not very English friendly. So our students are afraid of speaking English. So in my country, my government try to you know um. Uh, promote English as a natural language. So which means that we don't push many academic linguistic pressure. We want the kids like uh, immerse in the environment. So that's why in my school we have a, a we call native speaker teacher, international teacher, and also we build a different classroom for the for the student to you know play and learn. So that's why uh, right now I'm going to share you about how we learn English in my school. So we have a we call English village. So we have a different thing lesson, like an animal conservation, airport departure, arrival, restaurant. So this is a, actually a airport classroom. The kids can do roll and play. So in this scenario, they will lower down anxiety and stress to to practice their English. And use useful, we call communicative language. So the kids will play, you know, customer, guardian, and also they were like a, in the night market. They play, you know, sell, show and tell. So this scenario is a night market. The kids play, you know. Uh, Sell some game to customers, so they need to say something. And this is a martial art. We teach the kids doing some like a body uh, gesture, you know, <laughs> how to defend yourself. Learning martial art in English. And this is a we call hotel scenario. So actually, it's an environment simulation for the kids who like, uh, if they want to travel, the, the situation they need to use English, like an airport traveling, ordering, restaurant, hotel, and definitely we have uh, some lessons. We want our kids to introduce our value, our culture, in introducing our culture. In the classroom, we also use some technology like the iPad AR to in, in, involve our students, motivate their interest. This is a lesson we transfer the classroom into movie theater. So the kids learn how to, you know, buy the ticket, how to buy popcorn, and how to uh, recognize, learn the type of a music, uh, a movie, a different movie, comedy, documentary, horror movie. They need to practice. And this is an activity we call devil stick. It's a like a movement. So we try to teach English uh, via uh, English teacher, native speaker, immersion, and also technology, and also our environment. Okay, so that's some special from my school. Okay, let me start my presentation. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, let me. Uh... Okay. Uh, thank you so much. That I hope that you will get a little bit about uh, the context I'm teaching and I'm from. So today, I'm so happy that I'm going to share about integrating moral value into English language teaching in Taiwan. But just like uh, uh, the other uh, speaker mentioned that in Taiwan, uh, English is not main language. So 
a little thing we can do, uh, but we try to, to do that. Definitely, as a teacher, you are the model. You, before you want to teach literacy, you need to teach the value. Uh, teacher are the value be, be in the classroom. Before you teach them respect the, uh, the world, you need to teach, you need to show that you respect them and it's a very loving and warm in classroom. Okay, so I will introduce a little bit about me. So I would say that before pandemic, I'm only an English as a foreign language teacher in my classroom. After pandemic, uh, you know, uh, learning so many technologies and uh, technology helped me become global educator. So like today, I got a chance to share with you. So I become a Microsoft innovative teacher and also Google certified educator. And there are so many digital tools like an empower, transfer for teacher. And you know, teacher teaching becomes so great and so creative, innovative. So, so that's me, uh, you can call, uh, I, I become Flipgrid educator, book creator, Kahoo Ac Academy. So lots of a uh, technology empower teacher. Yeah, and, and then after this technology brought my view, uh, become a global educator, uh, I'm transforming. I'm not a, only an English teacher. I began to, you know, uh, to, to realize, connect with the real world. So at that time, uh, talk about citizenship, global citizenship. So now I will claim myself. I was, I was so happy that to say that I'm not only an English teacher, I'm an educator promoting SDG goal. And also I'm a SDG ambassador. See, that's so amazing. Teacher is a lifelong learner. <laughs> so that's why I mean, before uh, I will share you my classroom. So when you, uh, you know, connect to the real world, you will see sometime, wow, you need to, you, they have so many diversity and you need to come some value like a uh, tolerance, uh, you know, uh, there are so many things, ambiguity. There is not exactly, you know, text, a textbook English. And there are so many uh, culture by, by you know, diversity. So I would like to share this picture. So that's what I say. When I, in the beginning, I teach English uh, in my classroom, every kid, when you learn English, even when I was a little girl, when I started to learn English, my English teacher always say, you need to name, you need to have an English name. So which means that in the beginning, it's a lovely conversation, how to pronounce your name. That's it. When I, I when my country, we start to teach English, English at everything. So you become very small. You need to have an English name. You cannot speak your language in the classroom. So until I, I you know, expand my worldview, I connected uh, with uh, using English as tool to connect with the world, I see different. So this is a picture I would like to, uh, you know, uh, ask you. So what do you see in this picture? Yes, would you like to unmute yourself? Uh, a, a, bar. A, a bar? A bar? Yes. <laughs> a bird mm -hmm. bar? A bird? Yes. Yeah. yeah, is it a bird? A I see A rabbit. A rabbit? Yes. Rabbit? <laughs> is it a rabbit? Mm. Yes, I think yeah, that, this is a rabbit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, yes, it's, you know, it's so wonderful that uh, in my classroom and uh, until right now, I will see that, wow, they are no right or wrong. It's just a different perspective. Yes, this is a very, you know, uh, uh, picture to demonstrate that the diversity of a culture and even the value or you know the uh, teaching English in my classroom, so it's a pers different perspective. Yeah, definitely, it's a rabbit, it's a it's duck, and also it's a rabbit duck or duck rabbit. It's just up to how you look at the the angle. And and I think after seeing this picture, I'm start I'm starting that as a English teacher, some I will look at the different way in my classroom and also build a different relationship with my students. So uh, I will not treat my students as like, uh, you know, um, inefficient or, you know, uh, that inferior 
uh, English speaker. I will treat them as um, you know, multiple lingual speaker. So let's totally different change my view about teaching English. Okay, so now I would like to share like how a uh, teaching English in Taiwan. So like I mentioned a little bit, English is not a national official language. Uh, English is um, only mandatory school subject until primary school. So which means that um, uh, in my country, uh, you only can get English uh, this subject, formal subject until they are about age seven. Okay, but definitely learning English is a fever in my country. Some of my students, they learn English before, you know, they were toddler in a kindergarten, but they pay uh, very expensive tuition for the private kindergarten. But for most of us, as uh, I'm teaching in public school, English only learn in when they are primary grade one. So which means that our teaching time is quite limited, only 18 minutes in a week. Can you imagine that? I would like to ask you, how many uh, English teaching in your primary school? Teacher? In Indonesia, how many teaching? In Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not teaching in primary school. I'm mm -hmm. teaching in a uh, higher level uh, student, I mean, uh, in university. Mm -hmm. Here once once in a week, uh, you, you know, uh, of course, university level is different from uh, primary school, right? Yes, but I yeah. can tell you about the primary school. Okay, a, a university in my country, even they just took a one year, you know, uh, we have a four year study, right? But in yeah. English is not mandatory. You can take a, like, a, I think probably maybe three hours a week for university students for English. But the other, unless you take in English literature, you will you will speak English. Yeah, um, Mrs. Sweeney. Yes. In elementary school, officially in elementary school here in Indonesia, um, the English English subject is not compulsory. Oh. This is what is it? Um, in, the news, in the newest curriculum, we call it local content. Oh, mm -hmm. It is not local content anymore, sir, but it is like more like extracurricular. So the elementary school here don't have supplementary. Any, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. So oh. they, they don't have like obligations to have the English. That is, this is so, this is so sad <laughs> uh, yeah. because, yeah, because English is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and Indonesia is very wide. So not many uh, area in Indonesia. Uh, able to access uh, the English material as easy as those who are in Jakarta or in Surabaya, in the capital oh. of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So it is so sad when the government said that uh, English is not a compulsory subject anymore because the, the school then can choose not to have it. And they usually choose not to have it because this is not a compulsory that is wow. that is so sad about the English teaching for elementary school here in Indonesia. Yeah, so so that's yeah. why I mean uh, English as international language, right? So you if you want to be globalized and also compare, definitely, yeah. So we will go for that way. But it's um yeah yeah, uh, yeah it's I mean it's new to me that not many countries to choose that way. But I hope that yeah. uh, definitely they will come some way to mm -hmm. to learn. Yeah. So in my country, the policy, education policy, English is a mandatory subject. So pri from primary school in the system and then junior, definitely still the maybe they will have a, like a three and four hours a week and senior high, they will got maybe five and six. But we don't have that, uh, you know, teaching subject in English. Yeah. So that's a uh, so which means as an English teacher, limited time for us if you want to master the language. So English is only learn, not acquire. So it's not natural immersed. So only learn in classroom setting. So that's why our teaching, our uh, students usually have a textbook English. You know, it's, so when we talk about oral speaking, they don't know how to say that. Or, or they just, oh, oh, I don't know how to say, you know. So, so that's something our government found that, oh, that's something, you know, we need to push forward. So school, and and that's that's limited about school teaching. And but like I say, um, the English learning is universal important. So in Taiwan, lots of the parent will pay 
private time and tuition to, you know, go to the actual curriculum, private tutoring school. So which caused a, a situation in a class, in a school? For example, we have a big class. I, I am not sure that in your classroom, how many students? So we have a 30 students. Is that large? How about your classroom? <laughs> is 35 to 40. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think in Indonesia, maybe you still got more. Okay, <laughs> anyway, I think we have a universal challenge because there are too many students, right? And which means that uh, some of the students, they learn from kindergarten, their high social uh, status, they could, you know, learn English uh, in the earlier age. So we have a mixed ability. Some of the skills, students will think that English is so easy. <laughs> we have a textbook curriculum from government. We need to follow. So some of them will think it's too easy. Uh, it's not challenging. And some of them, they, they don't even know, you know, the alphabet. They still can learn it. So they are miss a huge ability. So, and also, like I said, English only, uh, you know, learn in school. So they have a low interest in learning English and also limited time in learning English. Think about, we only have a two hour <laughs> and 30 students. So, and also our culture, uh, we still uh, uh, praise the uh, academic performance. So we are test driven, which means that uh, when we teach English, usually it's still focused on grammar, linguistic, you know, uh, focus on test. Yeah, and also after COVID-19, the impact, internet, technology. Some of the teachers, they are good at technology and even students, their house are good with internet, but not, they are not, you know, make the gap even bigger. And also the globalization impact, I would say that, uh, you know, in my school, they are, because the globalization make the uh, people mobilized. So we have a more uh, student from, uh, you know, internationally, especially, I think that's interesting. We have a many students from Indonesia. So that's why, I mean, I start to have this, uh, you know, uh, I call it global impact. So I will share you some, uh, I mean, story in my classroom. Okay, so these are the challenge. So which means that as an English teacher, EFL teacher, what shall we teach? Yeah, because uh, this world is changing, right? You are not just uh, in the classroom. So I think as an English teacher in Taiwan, you will be like a teaching more than skill. So you need to think about competence, not a skill. So competence come many way. So focus on linguistic competence. That if you teach English, the, the kids should use English, not just you know get good score and then done. They don't speak it. They don't they don't treat English as a culture. And also right now, like I say, it's a real world authentic. You are global citizen. So how about the environment competence? you know, the global warming, the SDG, right? And also the other one I mentioned about the so cultural competence. In, in, I mean, before I would say that uh, I've been teaching 20 years. In the first several year, I would think I only teach English. Everyone, every student in my class when we speak the same language, Mandarin, and then we learn English. But uh, after, I mean, this globalization, I mean, the, you know, the changes, global village world. So lots of uh, foreign students come to my classroom. So what language should we, you know, they don't speak Mandarin. They don't speak English. So what should we teach them? So what's the role of English? So that's uh, quite interesting. So uh, as I think about teacher, you are really, you know, uh, have a many role. So these are, so I think, uh, as not to burn out, you need to have some humor in your life. So these are something I, I found very interesting about when we talk about teachers' role. So uh, this is a, I mean, think about how many of you are homeroom teacher, not the only English teacher. So if you are homeroom teacher, like I say, you you are the parents at their classroom. So maybe I think there are some, you, you are tenderized and these are the verb to describe teacher, okay? We are not talking about teacher, you are uh, motivation, you are inspiring, but these are some practical thing to describe teacher's life. You are hypnotizer. You remember, you need to ask your student to, you know, <laughs> wash your hands, be careful about the COVID-19. And you are edge juggle. You juggle so many things. And also you are page exhausted. Remember, you need to print out so many worksheets, you know, uh, you know, uh, the material, prepare material. 
for your student, for your teaching. And also, if you teach younger kids, I think this is one. Uh, also, I'm, I think maybe you need to teach and you cannot go to the toilet. So maybe you need to, you know, just tolerate about. And also this is full get, which means you always forget your lunch on the desk because you need to pray, you need to take care of your student. And this one, I totally understand. If now you are snoozing, I could understand because now you are in the conference. <laughs> it's a teaching, it's a training. You need to come here. Otherwise you won't get like a, you know, a gray or scare. So we call conference news. I think these are so many things to describe the teacher, the role, right? So, but anyway, we have a humor about ourselves as an English teacher or any, any teacher, but definitely we need to be a good teacher. We need to be a champion for our, our students. So, so that's something, I mean, uh, I will share that uh, after pandemic and after the global world, I start to uh, not treating myself as only English teacher. So which means that in the beginning, we all know the brooms, right? You need to teach the continent, the skill, but right now, and then Maslow. I think right now as an educator, we need to push Maslow which means every student in your classroom can. So when you teach literacy, you need to understand your kids. You need to teach your uh, student value in your classroom, which means you need to take care of each student in the classroom. So for example, I would say the, the I mean, uh, the story in my teaching, in my, in my school. So like I say, uh, after the, I mean, several years, uh, lots of uh, Indonesia kids uh, moved to transfer to my uh, school. So uh, I'm lucky to, you know, have a, a student from Indonesia. They are only seven. It's the first year they move uh, you know, from the country. They don't speak English. I don't speak Indonesia. So one of the kids, I mean, they are twin girls. So they are in the classroom. So the first day in the office, uh, some of my Mandarin teacher because they want to name them, say, what's your name? Okay, so the girl just say, I'm Nada, you know? Okay, so my teacher just uh, mean well, like, oh, in my country, usually we need to name a uh, Mandarin name. So I will call you Nada, you know? Suddenly the girl, uh, the twin girl in the, from Indonesia just cry uh, and, uh, and become very crumpy. Okay, so, you know, we. The Mandarin teacher doesn't know what to do. Just say, oh, how, what happened? So the girl is not in good temper. You know, uh, the girl just cry and, you know, looking very sad. So because the Mandarin teaching calling him, you know, Mandarin name, nada, nada. But the little girl just say, I'm not nada. I'm nada. <laughs> you know, she insists that everyone call her name in Indonesia. So at that moment, I realized that, wow, it's really important. So when we uh, teach the kids in the classroom, especially we come from different, you know, culture, we need to respect individual, even the small thing like uh, your name. So right now, uh, um, so that's what I mean. Before teaching the value as a foreign teacher, uh, I, I'm, not I, I, I'm not sure that in Indonesia language or especially English, is if it's a foreign language, I mean, it's a little bit hard to teach them some, like uh, we say character, but definitely there are some value. We will be, you know, deliver. But remember Dr. Albert said not, you know, not taught, but you, you, you just deliver. So this is the value I try to deliver in my classroom, English classroom. Your name is a song. Respect everyone's name. Sorry? Yeah, so respect everyone's name. So your name, is something, you know, just your identity. So at the Nada story, I respect everyone. Uh, even now I look at my Mandarin, my, you know, my, even they speak the same way, language to me. I will always uh, share that right now because right now I'm teaching the younger primary one. So whenever they, you know, they learn English, sometimes they will tell me about, oh, teacher, I don't have an English name. So hmm, what's English name? For example, John, Mary, I, I, I would say to them that you don't need to have an English name. You just, you, you know, you just yourself. So I can call you just by your name. So I'm also, I have a, a you know, curious, uh, okay, I will stop sharing. I would like to 
<laughs> raise this. So I'm just curious about that. Uh, uh, not sure that about uh, in primary school, if you are primary or senior, even university, do, do your student or they, they come English name? Sorry, Eng English name? Yeah, which means that do you need to name yourself to be Mary or, you know, Tiffany or Michael or something? Uh, in, when we give examples, for yes. example, in a sentence. Mm -hmm. In your class mm -hmm. or in your school? Me personally, I usually use the, the names that we usually have here in, in Madura or mm -hmm. in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. I usually mm -hmm. use uh, Wi-Fi. That's your name, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will bring it up. Uh, sorry, maybe it's not. So, uh, for example, maybe it's not, but definitely in my country uh, as a foreign language, I would say that in my country, teaching everything, it just take, taking you away, even your name. So every kid, you know, even the parent will expect that, oh, uh, you name yourself, you know, total differently. But that's that's the point I'm mentioning. I need to uh, want that student to be like a, your respect your identity. As an um, English teacher, you are not English just a tool. Like a, I, I will re reply to the, the first uh, Dr. Muhammad, right? So mention that only English is a tool. Yeah, mm. value could be delivered, but not taught. So this is something small thing we should start starting from our classroom. So that's something I would like to share that. So that's why, I mean, in my lesson, in my classroom, I will always encourage myself uh, because uh, they are, uh, like I say, in my classroom, there are lots of a uh, gap. There are some high level students. They are lower level students. So when lower le level students, they are in the classroom, they feel like uh, anxiety and, you know, they will feel that uh, a little bit, you know, not themselves, so I want, I want to encourage them. If you don't speak English, you can speak in, it's good. You are still you, you know, you got still your value. So don't, don't think about something shame about you. You don't speak English, you, your English is not good, something like that. So, so that's why, I mean, in the beginning, I, like I, I would like to say the value, everyone is unique because uh, most of the time when we learn English, another language, you are giving another identity. I don't want the student to learn another language and lose your own identity. So everyone is un unique. I think we, I will start like a respect individual, start from calling student by your name, your name come. Yeah, so that's why something, I, uh, so I, in my classroom, there is a thing about your name is a song. Because in my classroom, they are students from abroad. Like I have a student from Indonesia, like a Nata. And we have uh, something, you know, uh, we don't, a uh, student hard to pronounce like today. <laughs> so I'm so happy <laughs> that you try very hard to pronounce my name. And, <laughs> and I feel that, oh, wow, <laughs> you know. So uh, in my classroom, definitely the little one, little young learner, I also want to give them this kind of a security. So I would respect every kid in my classroom. Even uh, we have a shared different culture. So definitely, yeah, we will respect each kid start in the classroom. So I think that will uh, deliver the value and literacy just be, uh, starting from the classroom. <laughs> okay, so here I'm also sharing another, like a, I think it, it's like a lesson plan. It's a name jar talking about an Asian girl. He, she moved to America. You know, Asian name is really hard for them to pronounce. So, so that's also a very interesting story. And then until everyone call her name, she feels secure. So I think that's something, maybe it's minor, but I think it's a, a play very important, very important. when we learn English, when we learn uh, other language, don't lose our own identity. Start from your name. Yeah. Yeah, that's something from me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Winnie. And we have a lot of questions in our chat box to you, oh, Mrs. Yeah. Winnie. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's start from uh, Mr. Rosit. So much similarity between Taiwan and Indonesia. 
but I remember that our country was once colonized by Netherlands. Has just has Dutch influence? Your, oh oh yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Netherlands, right? Yes, yes. In my country, uh, so Taiwan was being, oh, but Taiwan has been called a Formosa. Maybe you may heard of uh, Formosa. Mm -hmm. It's a Portuguese. So I think in colony time, mm -hmm. Dutch, uh, they was you know uh, in my country too. So we have uh, some fortry, you know, his historical heritage. They are still remain the fortress. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we have been ruled, ruled by Netherlands, yeah. <laughs> we also, this is very interesting. We also have Mr. Sahat. He is from Indonesia, but now he is studying in Taiwan. Oh, wow. Yeah, he is asking about, um, to my best understanding, character values are also implemented in Indonesian curriculum from the Ministry of National Education. What are the character values, religious, honest, tolerant, discipline, creative, love, homeland, love, peace? I think. Oh, okay. Uh, I see. Yeah, I could answer I think, that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I think, like I say, in English, uh, because English is uh, our foreign language, so we teach character by our native language. So, which means that every morning, every week, assembly, you know, we will have a, like a student assembly. So we will, you will teach, uh, I think the character will be like uh, honesty, justice, fairness, and courage. I think they are some universal uh, character, but we will teach them in, you know, in Mandarin. And mm -hmm. yeah, uh, every morning we will like uh, gather together. We even have a, like a national anthem, like a patriotism, right? We teach them love their country. So we will have a national flag, uh, you know, every week. And also the, the kids will gather together. So our teacher will tell them the story by most of will be Mandarin. Yeah. So that's why I mean, as an English teacher, there are something, little thing we can do. But that's what I mean. Uh, starting from the classroom, even they are not in the curricul curriculum, mm -hmm. but we, we, we teach them, you know, the value, like a respect is the most important. Like a, uh, you need to like a respect them, let them be themselves, and then they can respect any other, and they have a confidence. They they could be fair, things like that. So starting from our classroom, yeah. I hope that will answer your question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another opinions from. Uh, comment. This is a comment from Rani. Different perspective has different. Different perspective have different effect. Uh, this is dealing with the picture you share. Uh, Mr. Rosit also think that it is a rabbit, not a duck. But I see it as a duck. It Would a, you like to see that one? <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. it's a you know. Uh, I think recently, uh, probably you heard about the uh, the Marco. Uh, I mean, the British royal, right? So yeah. the the prince. Uh, I, I I don't know the Mar Marco. I mean the 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 prince. I mean. Harry's wife just ah. read a story mm. to his son Archie. Oh she just yeah, she just read a story book. Actually, it's a story book called Rabbit Duck. So it's just up to how you look at the picture. I yeah. think it just explain how Marco. I, I, what's her name? <laughs> Megan. Megan Marco. Oh, Megan. Megan. Yeah, just Megan. explain how you see Megan and mm. you know Harry. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, they, they get from the royal. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, mm -hmm. it's just like that, how you look at the thing. So yeah. she telling the story rather than, <laughs> I think that explains a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so I won't say you are wrong. Actually, I think if you look at this way, it's a rabbit. If you mm -hmm. look at that way, it's a duck. This is a duck. Never mm -hmm. don't, never fight. Because, <laughs> never <laughs> fight. because that's yes. something we call uh, cultural diversity <laughs> yeah you need so, to respect different angle <laughs> yes i do believe it so being uh spiritual spiritually literate is means being tolerance mm, give yes, respect yeah. and always be kind mm -hmm. yeah, because, yeah uh we we have another uh, speaker from morocco she's here mr uh mrs mm, 
Mrs. We have Mrs. Zahra. Zahra, Zahra are not here. Wow, let's okay. try to read the name. <laughs> <laughs> Is this from Zohra? Morocco? Yeah. Okay, so Miss Mrs. Winnie, we are very thankful for your uh, very My interesting brother. presentations. You share a lot uh, about the way you teach your students in Taiwan and um, seems that your school is a multicultural school. Mm -hmm. So um, impl not implementing, but including the spiritual literacy is very important in, in, in teaching English, of course, in your, in your school. Thank you very much. Hopefully we can have another discussions in other um, lecture talks. Uh, oh. Thank you very much, uh, Hello, Mrs. Uh, Winnie. Yes, Mr. Wafi. Uh, Ms. Winnie, I would like to ask your uh, email address or WhatsApp number because I would like to send a certificate. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I have a, you know, the, the, the app with, uh, with Mr. Okay, sure. where should Wafi. I stand? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's um, move into our last presenter today. She's from Morocco. Miss okay, just a minute. Yeah, Prof Professor Zohra Alana from Les Ecoles Insani, Al Jadida, and she's going to present about um, oh, implementing spiritual values through English language teaching in Morocco. Okay, what time is it there, Mrs. Uh, Zohra? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, one greetings from Morocco. Yeah, what time is it there in uh, Morocco? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so before starting, yeah, so my name is Zohra Lana, mm -hmm. and uh, I teach in uh, Morocco. Yeah, yes. Ehsan, yeah, Ehsan High School. Mm -hmm. So happy to join and to be with you in order to share some uh, interesting information about teaching. Yeah, so before starting, teaching is um, an important responsibility for everyone. And being a teacher is to be as a candle. If I see, uh, I say a candle, it means that you have to, uh, to burn yourself in order to show the, the path to others. Because later you are going to have that your seeds are great. Yeah. So for me in uh, teaching in Morocco, um, it's totally different from other countries. We have to, uh, um, to teach our students the most important values. And one of these values is love, respect, responsibility. The most important thing is our religion. Yeah. Uh, and it's based on, uh, as you know, love. If you don't uh, love each other, it means nothing. If you are not responsible, you are nothing. If you don't respect each other, you are nothing. So, Concerning the most important um, quotes that I will share with you is this. As Shakespeare, I think, I Shakespeare said, them. wait a minute. So before the quote, if, you, uh, if one asks, what is the value of the human being? or what is the participation of human being in this larger order? The larger order includes human beings, plants, air, water, soul, animals, um, birds, etc. everything in the world. So here we need to concentrate over this. What is the role of human being in this existence to add a connection on these existing things and how can we maintain our relationship with each other and every unit in this existence? So therefore, the content of value education always focus right understanding with harmony at various level, which can reproduce by one's thought 
activities, work, and awareness, which means that we help our students to learn through activities and they are given to learn different values. Values are introduced in assembly each month. Yeah, so in every session, yeah, uh, we introduce a new value to our yeah, uh, children to become familiar with the language and the ideas. Lots of basic training is needed, especially in the early years, manners, routines, picking up the positive and giving praise when children show respect to each other. So we in Morocco, we are forever motivating and inspiring our uh, children or learners. We have high expectations and clear boundaries. The foundation of good values require good discipline. So, and this is the crops for, for, for us in Morocco. We aim for a calm, reflective atmosphere which facilitates uh, contemplation. Then the children get to know themselves better and develop a sense of responsibility for their own lives and happiness. At the start of the year class, so for example, now I'm going to start on uh, the 1st October. So the, the first thing that we decide to do with our children is the rules. Um, they are meaningful and very helpful for uh, teachers. Opportunities are taken to discuss values throughout the curriculum. As teachers, we try to live the values. We teach best by being role models. We are the models, yeah, or we are going to be the models for our um, students or learners. What is values-based education? It's an approach to teaching that works with values. It creates a strong learning environment. It helps to enhance academic achievement and develop students' social and relationship um, skills that last throughout their lives, which means that our children in Morocco become respectful and responsible. They know their duties. The positive learning environment is achieved through the positive values modeled by the staff or by teachers throughout the school. It quickly liberates teachers and students from the stress, and also it breaks the routines, which frees up substantial teaching and learning time. Values always frees up substantial um, or provides social capacity to students, uh, equipping them with social and relationship skills, intelligences, and attitudes to succeed at school and throughout their lives. Which means during the whole year, students uh, learn different values. And this is, um, uh, we are proud of these things um, to help our students to learn uh, how to love each other, how to respect each other, how to be a modest person instead of being a egoist one yeah, so these are uh, really important things yeah, in, during uh, or throughout our learning. Value education is the understanding of fundamental values. It covers types of values in life. So for example, love, this is the first and the most important value in life. It's important personal value to open your mind or the learner's mind to the concept of them. Love is the bringer of compassion. So we try to love as teachers, we love uh, uh, ourselves, we love our jo job first, and then we help our students to love themselves and to love their, their, um, their teachers and their subjects. Once we are led by compassion, we see the best in ourselves. The second value is understanding, and this is the second important value in life. If we can to understand each other, if we help um, our students or our learners to understand yeah, each other, uh, it, will, it will be good. And we are given, or they are given to lead a happy life. If we are ready to understand concepts, people, and circumstances for what they are, we can gain control over it. One, 
must understand and appreciate and respect the efforts done by others. Especially, uh, we help our learners to respect us as teachers because we are um, doing a great and noble uh, profession. Respect. Respect is the only way we can adapt to the best of all around us, making us better person every day, which means that we try to help learners to be respectful, uh, respectful uh, ones in every moment, every day. A very important fact about respect is that the more we give, the more we earn. So the more we are going to help our learners to respectful, to respect each other, to respect nature, to respect birds, yeah, to respect um, uh, the earth, yeah, we are going to be proud of ourselves. It's in fact the most important values in society. Now discipline, it's the most important values in life. Um, discipline and responsible person will respect his surroundings. As such, he's always been punctual. Then we have honesty. Um, it's uh, the most perfect one or value. An honest person always try not to commit mistakes, even if we know that every human being is mistaken. But we try to, uh, to convince our learners, if you make mistakes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you are going to give up, but you are going to learn from your mistakes and then you move forward. You don't have to say no, stop saying no, stop saying what if because this is life. Life is full of challenges, which means that we help our learners yeah, uh, to bear in mind that life is full of difficulties. So we don't have to, uh, uh, to, to give up on, or we don't have to be worried about being mistaken. Even our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was uh, made a mistake in his life. Yeah. So no one is perfect than Allah. We uh, convince our uh, learners, if they make mistakes, they have to admit it, they have to accept it, but learn from it and don't give up. All the other values need to be accepted with honesty is being responsible. Now, uh, concerning the spiritual values, they can't be taught just in English. We, they can be taught in all subjects. Take, for example, in English, uh, it can be in, um, included in stories, poetry that express human experience and response to life and death. Use of uh, sinness and imagination in drama and other subjects to develop inner awareness, express and feelings and emotions through verbal and written communication, knowing the word can influence feelings. Spiritual values can be taught also at maths. Why not? Teachers uh, should teach maths in a funny way. Enjoyment of and fascination by numbers, including the idea of infinity, reflecting on pattern and order, as well as a sense of mystery and space. Exploring the relationship of num numbers, shape and objects, and the possibility of interconnectedness. Um, Sense of achievement and self-worth at appropriate levels of understanding. As you see that we can teach spiritual values, not just at English, Arabic, yeah, but in all yeah, uh, subjects. It depends to uh, teachers. And we have different ways yeah, of teaching. We can teach them uh, at science, scientific links with spiritual interpretation about the universe and life, using the school grounds for reflection on relationships between people and the environment, reflecting on the measure of the natural world and physical world, life cycles and growth awareness of physical self as wonderful. 
Also in ITC, which means technology, sense of words in human potential and achievement, designing cause for religious festivals, which trying to convince or to see a big difference between religions, but we are all equal. Um, then we can teach English at sports, why not? If the teacher is um, um, an active person, is going to be uh, a, a really um, a lovely person, practicing sports, uh, moving from one place to another, motivating uh, learners, yeah, so which means that students are going to learn in a good, yeah, uh, healthy environment in all subjects without difference. We try to um, to teach history at uh, um, we teach values, sorry, at history, ideas of change and development and creation. Teachers should forever be creative and imaginative. Uh, I'm so sorry, um, Mrs. Zora. Yeah, you have another five minutes to to end your presentations uh, before yes. we go to the questions and answer sessions. Uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So I can say that I can say that spiritual values um, are known, but it differ. Uh, it um, differs from one teacher to another person. So concerning uh, teacher's behavior, in order to try to meet the needs of children, self, which means all teachers try always to be consistent in their own behavior and in their expectations of children. Um, they value all the children, display great patience and listen carefully to children, focus on and emphasize the positive things, face reality and help pupils to come to terms with difficult issues because uh, most of, nowadays, most of uh, uh, learners, yeah, they are suffering either with their families or with themselves or with the school or with the teachers. Uh, only this proof of poor behavior, never the child, try to make time for one another don't neglect yeah, learners because they are all the same. There's no difference between this one and this one. We help all the children to learn. Yeah, to, um, uh, in the final yeah, year, we should have uh, good crops, fruitful, yeah, fruitful year. Uh, speak quietly and avoid shouting with um, uh, learners. Uh, try to have a sense of humor in class, communicate with patterns to ensure that they appreciate the school's values and to ensure that there is a common understanding. So like this, I have finished. Thank you so much. I hope that it's uh, interesting and um, we have learned yeah, something which is new. Thank you so much, Mrs. Zohra. Um, yeah, thank you. We have a questions for you in the in the chat box. This is from Muhammad Rosid. Uh, Professor Zora Marhaban, where do values come from? Are they cultured or rather imbued in our souls since birth? In one way or another, can we track them from religion? Yes, please, I can't hear you. Um this is from Mr. Muhammad Rosid. Um, where do values come from? Are they cultured or rather imbued in our souls since birth? In one way or another, can we track them from religion? The, the values. I really didn't, I really didn't get you. Um, we, is, we can, yeah. we, uh, yeah, can you, yeah, we, yeah, maybe yeah, Mr. Yeah. Muhammad Rosid can directly ask to uh, Professor Zohra. 
Al-Qiyam al Ahlan wa sahlan. Ustaz, ana ustaz ana takalam bil Arabia. Mungkin ghairub talaqah, walakin ana urid an as'al an hadhihi al-qiyam allati takalamti min qabl hal hal hiya hal hiya min as-thaqafa aw min min ad-din. Hal hal mungkin masalan fil Qur'anil Karim kil zahar al-fasadu fil bari wal bahri bima kasabat sayyidin nas nakhudh dhalika kal qiyam fi fi ta'lim syukran mafhum yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe uh, mrs zohra can answer it in in english so we can catch the yeah so dialogue. our capture is forever based on the quran yeah, uh, forever we teach yeah our children or learners yeah things related to Islam yeah uh, if our learners aren't going to follow our religion and uh, don't have a, a, any idea about the Quran yeah because there are some people who uh, who wants to show off yeah and send the children to private schools yeah instead of uh, public schools yeah just to to show that um, i have money etc etc but they don't get the real yeah education but uh, if you are going to uh, plant yeah values through the quran yeah and you are going to follow the path of our prophet muhammad peace be upon him yeah we are going to be proud of ourselves as teachers yeah if i'm going to show to my uh, children that i love them yeah so this is one value how am i going to to, to show to them that um, i I, I love them yeah i really as a teacher i have a, a good relationship with my uh, my uh, my students yeah, so forever we base yeah our um, teaching yeah yeah on the Quran yeah following uh, our uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and following what is uh, um, uh, uh, stated in the Quran. So I'll tell you, how did din min al thaqafa, stada, had kaifa nukarin bin al din wa thaqafa. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So this is our culture, yeah, mm. yeah. So we teach, yeah, students all the values, yeah, starting from the beginning of the year till the, at the end. In every month, yeah, um, we teach them a value. For example, the beginning of the year, uh, we are uh, we have a planning. Yeah, we are going to teach them how they are going to respect. Yeah, themselves. How they are going to respect nature. How they are going to uh, to lead. Yeah, uh, a peaceful life. Yeah, through respecting each other. Because if they don't respect each other, if they don't respect themselves, if they don't respect their families, then they are nothing. They are nonsense in life. All right. So great. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Zohra. And yeah, um. Can. Yeah. I, I can catch you from your presentations um, that you give the point on um, the importance of values that our religion taught. Yeah, there are many values in every religions um, that try to uh, talk to every people. So I believe in every country, religion may be become the references for us, the teacher, to teach values, especially in English class. But uh, we believe that every religion share similar values, mostly about, as Professor Sohra mentions, uh, love, kindness, responsibility, and of course, respect. So um, the point, being spiritually literate, Hopefully, can ha hopefully, but I believe can help the world to live a better to be a better place to live. So, um, from the four speaker, um, I noticed that in certain country, certain um, religion is not specifically used in um, instilling the spiritual literacy in the English teaching, but the values of every religions may become the references for 
for the, the teacher to teach love, respect, responsibility, kindness, and tolerance, and many other good values in order to, to make this world as a better place to, to stay, to live. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much. Is there any yeah. final statement from all the presenter before uh, we ended the presentations today? Maybe from uh, Mrs. Winnie, Professor Zora, or um, yeah, we, we already uh, have Mr. Albert and Mr. Zulkifli also that uh, live previously because they have another things to do. Is there any final statement, Mrs. Zora? Uh, yeah, yeah. So mm. in here we have a plan for this year. Yeah, uh, so I shared with you our values for 2021-2022. So the values are in September, we are focusing on uh, how to be a determined person. October, mm. there is another value, November, which means that we are going to work on values during, during the whole year. Oh, okay. So in Morocco, um, th this will be like um, the learning objective for every subject there that in this mm. September, you need to teach about how to be determined. In every subject, yeah. you need to instill this. Uh, yes, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. We so, focus, yeah, the most important things for us, yeah, are our values. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we teach, yeah, values through learning. For example, I have, for example, present simple. Yeah, I'm going to wow. integrate, yeah, one value. Wow, this is wonderful. So even the, the government already, uh, what is it? Like, think it specifically. So every month, so this is the values that you have to, to share to your yeah. students. I see. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah. Mm. So we on- This uh, is for, for every level since- uh, Learning. Early because learner to adult, adult learner. For every level of education. Yes, in all levels, yeah. Mm, okay, I see. Yeah, from primary to high school. I see. Okay, so the teacher uh, then have the uh, independency to, to decide how to teach the students, but this is the values yes. that they have to teach so, in every month. That was my idea. It depends to the teacher. How is I he see. going to make his plan or planning, lesson planning? How okay. is he going to integrate each value for each man? Okay. So for example, uh, my way of teaching is uh, learning in a funny way and through projects. Mm. In every month, yeah, I have a project. Mm. I see. So the, the government already made the curriculum for every level of education. Then they let the teacher to be creative and um, what is it? What is it? Like yeah. uh, being very creative, yeah. Because uh, the teacher knows their students better than the government, right? Mm. Yeah, so the teacher knows better than their yeah. learners. They mm. know because mm. they need, yeah, what they need. And yeah. in Morocco, we don't focus on learning because everything is uh, uh, you know, on the net. Yeah, they are going to, to, to search, yeah. but values, no, we base uh, yeah, everything on the Quran, from the Quran, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, of course. So why am I going to, to make an effort to uh, uh, help a student to learn, for example, uh, um, mm. present continuous, past simple, or something related to communication, yeah. Yeah, instead of values? Yeah, we yeah. don't have to forget values and focus on learning because to, uh, uh, teach uh, learners nowadays uh, are more active than uh, than uh, teachers and they know more than teachers. So, uh, yeah. what am I going to better myself? Yeah, myself. Uh, yeah, um, in uh, helping students to uh, to communicate, to to sing, etc. But instead, I have to focus on something which is more important. Yeah, which is uh, which are values. Yeah. So uh, I feel great when I teach. Uh, or help my student to, uh, for example, uh, to teach them how to be uh, uh, a positive person, a tolerant person, a mm -hmm. respectful person. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm proud of myself, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so hopefully everybody here that uh, listening to our discussions can uh, be creative enough and have a willing to always um, involving the values to our teaching. Yeah. Be creative in um, involving the the good values uh, and to to instilling the to build to build the spiritual literacy to our students. Yeah, yeah. we believe that we can do that. Yeah, because as uh, Dr. Albert said, that a teacher can make a difference. Yeah, yeah. In Arabic, we say yeah, المعلم أن يكون رسولا. So mm -hmm. why are not, uh, is it difficult for us to be as, uh, or um, to be a symbol or an ideal person for mm -hmm. our learners? I don't think so. It's very easy. Yeah. Uh, may I? Hi, uh, Professor. I'm ah, really yeah, we about... have uh, Mrs. <laughs> yeah. Finney. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I mean, learning about the value uh, comes from, you know, experience and a teacher is very important. So may I just ask in Morocco, these values are taught by English or uh, Arabic? What, kind, what language when you teach the value? All subjects. All subjects. Are they teaching in yeah. English? Yeah. Yeah, I'm teaching English, but you can teach values in all subjects. I have already said this. Yeah, you can teach values uh, at science, maths, physics, history, sports. Why not? But it depends to the kind of teachers. Do you love, yeah? Or do you want to teach your students? Yeah, yes, the kinds yes. of values or yes. no? Mm. But at, uh, at our school, at our school, we insist on values. Yeah, so what language are you uh, teaching them? I mean, are you teaching them in Arabic or English? I no, mean, English. Uh, English? Yeah. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, got it. So in, in Morocco, English is a foreign language or official language? It's an official language, yeah. It's um, official language, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as uh, um, uh, everyone knows that Moroccan people can speak more than one, two languages, more than three languages. We are, um, uh, I'm not going to, uh, to say that, um, um, I want to show up, but we can speak more than three languages, Arabic, French, English, uh, mm. Arabic is our mother tongue. Uh, mm. We can speak uh, the Germany, uh, all languages, yeah? Uh, which means that uh, we are um, uh, eager to learn, but it depends mm. on the kind of the personality. Okay. So in your school, I mean, may I ask one more? Yeah, I mentioned. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. In Morocco education system, uh, so so there are many foreign language uh, taught in school, right? Yeah. So there are more than English. You also have a, like a friend Germany. Yeah. In uh, for example, from starting from the primary system. In primary system, what the other language you are teaching? Not, oh, yeah, we have uh, uh, from primary we have French, English, mm -hmm. and Arabic, and we have also Spanish. Wow! So they can I choose know. from right. So they can choose to learn, or are they mandatory to learn this language? No, no, they have they have to choose. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but most most learners choose English. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ali, so you have uh, more choices. Because mm -hmm. in my country, we only have a uh, English <laughs> only. Ah, yeah. No, in Morocco there is choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but most of learners they choose English because they want they uh, um, immigrate to Canada, to United Kingdom, to uh, mm -hmm. America. Yeah, so they need English. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, which yeah. means that for us, for us uh, French, uh, it's not a kind of interesting uh, language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah yeah. Okay. So it's a really multilingual, multiple lingual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's something we call diversity. When we learn language, oh. we should. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Diversity, which yeah, so normally we need to, to speak more than one language, more than two languages. If no, we are uh, um 
what am, um, am I going to say? We have nothing. Yeah, really. So we are multilingual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Do you speak a bit? Yeah, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Over to Thank you very much, Martin. Mrs. Winnie. Yeah, and yeah, others? Do you have any um, questions to Mrs. Zohra? Um, this is from Muhammad Rashid. We have, uh, yes, the French language. How about Berber? What is, is it a Greek polyglot? Oh, uh, this is a, another language, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, because we already, um, uh, what is it? Too Ahead long the from the, the, the time, <laughs> yeah. We are 35 minutes from the, the time that we should have. So I'm so sorry. I know that we cannot talk about spiritual literacy in two hours. But hopefully later on, we will have another series talking about this specifically. So um, for Mrs. Zohra, Mrs. Uh, Winnie, and uh, all the participants, we also have Mr. Uh, Zulkifri and Mr. Uh, Albert. And thank you very much for uh, having uh, joining us from the beginning to the end, hopefully uh, we get a lot of uh, things and we can use that for the sake of the developments of education all around the world. Because yes, I believe that teachers can make difference and we always can change the world from our classroom. Okay, hopefully we are willing and creative enough to be a responsible teacher. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And there are a certification uh, to link in the chat box. Yeah, if you want to get the certificate and the certificate will directly send into your email. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, good evening. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
So I mean, if you are interested in studying, yeah, welcome to come to Taiwan. Yeah, because lots of uh, my students, their parents just moved to Taiwan, uh, you know, getting their uh, PhD degree mm -hmm. in medical or engineering science. So that's why recent, I think these two years. So that's why, I mean, I will share, I share the story with you. Lots of uh, uh, kids, uh, they don't speak Mandarin. They don't speak English. You know? <laughs> so, so that's why, I mean, oh, it's it, it just, uh, you know, awakened that, oh, I should, you know, English is just a, a tool. I should respect every kid as an individual. So no matter what language they speak, so you are what you are. <laughs> so I think this today, I'm so happy that lots of uh, uh, we share that as a teacher, that the value come from your classroom. You don't need to teach them, definitely, but you're just doing, they just learn. Yeah. Because teacher is a model. Uh, Weva, teacher is a model. Weva, Miss Winnie yes, is Mr. my best Rocky. friend, so uh, she would like to offer me a scholarship to Taiwan. <laughs> I'm waiting once, for it. Okay. Yeah, once I become president. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sahad, what is your uh what is oh, your yes, yes. um apa? question or something? Yeah. Subject. What is your subject? Uh, okay. What did you take? Major, in... major. Major, uh, major. What? Yes. Uh when I was in Indonesia, I studied about English education. So ah. basically, I'm an English teacher. Yeah. And then oh. in Taiwan, oh. I chose oh, I applied it. linguistic. <laughs> Uh, focus into teaching. Yeah, so oh. definitely I will be an English teacher in my future. And oh, uh, great. Mr. Wafi, maybe, maybe you can ask him to join the Share to Care. Of course. Yeah. Of so, course. which part of Indonesia are you from, Mr. Sahat? I'm from Medan City. Oh, mm, Medan. Horas. Horas. Horas Bah. Horas bah. <laughs> and right. I want to continue my study also for PhD program. It is very possible for me. But because Taiwan, they offer many scholarship. There yeah. are many international students right now. So, berarti, berarti yeah. Buefa, ab abang ini siap sekolah Medan ya, bang? Iya, yes, karena dari Medan. <laughs> Can you speak Chinese? Is it a must for those I who want to take scholarship in yes, Taiwan, in Taiwan to uh, use Mandarin? Taiwan, no. Mandarin. Mandarin. Yeah, if we study in Taiwan, uh, we can also learn Chinese. So. You know, this is Chinese environment. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we have much opportunity to learn Chinese. And everywhere, wherever you go, you can practice your Chinese. And also people here speak English. Yeah. But so, uh, English. Mr. Sahad, you, I think here you we, apply, live, we live in, you... Chinese, in Chinese situation also here, but uh, uh, they can't speak Chinese. They are Chinese uh, generation. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh, we have different Chinese, I think, uh, in Indonesia and in Taiwan. Yeah, mm. the language is a bit different. Hello? Yeah, when we Mr. talk Sahad, about... yes. Uh, yes. When you apply the scholarship to Taiwan, uh, is it a must for you to be able to communicate in, in Taiwan? Mandarin. Uh, Mandarin? No, in Mandarin? No. no. Only uh, Toek. Yeah. Toek, yes. yeah. yeah. Toek? Even I don't, Toek to, I, I don't need to prove my... Toval certificate or IELTS or something like that. Oh. But oh. I did have interview with the professor from my department. Oh. I did have an interview. By yeah. English? Yes, in English. Because I study about English. Of course, they want to make sure I'm you qualified. You can speak English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. In, my, yeah, say something. Yeah. in my school, because my school, uh, next to my school, there is a university. They are medical mm -hmm. and engineering. Hmm. I think most of them, the parents, they don't speak Mandarin. So I think the question, you don't need to be fluent in Mandarin. Ah, I, I think definitely your professional, I mean, uh, area. Uh, and also, I think maybe language, uh, English, right? They need to, yeah, because they need to communicate with you in English. So Yeah, hmm. yeah. especially wow. if you want to, yeah, Taiwan hmm. is wonderful. I really <laughs> Thank really you. Love I know that. I know from the, from the movie, from the drama. Oh. Meteor Garden movie, Meteor right? Meteor Garden, yeah. That that was a very famous um drama. I thought it was Korean, but it is no. It is Chi Taiwan, yeah. Taiwan. Yeah, Mr. Wow. Abdul. Yeah, we may have <laughs> about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah no don't worry. Oh yeah. You could come here, become PhD, get your I mean, degree. I mean, yeah, this is Korean. Open your video. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yeah, so welcome. I mean, uh, Sahaya, uh, if you have uh, something about the uh, English teaching, yeah, you could yeah contact me and welcome to visit. We can have an online again. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. Yeah, I save your number and also yes, your yes. email address. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. And help us that uh, we can see uh, meet each other in this forum too. Yeah. yeah. My pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. Pleasure is my too. Uh, uh, Ma'am Eva, because I think it's, it's uh, the time is clicking. Yes. Yeah. time, so. But no one leave. You see, everyone is stay here. Yeah, they were. They are so amazed of you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. So I hope that next time we can have a more conversation. Yeah. We can exchange our ideas too. Just yeah, wait for maybe the next uh, for the webinar. Next Maybe later we can we can make a webinar talking specifically about teaching English to young learners Ooh. in Taiwan and also in, in other countries. Yeah. Because the, Sorry, that must I, be very so interesting. Yeah, yeah primary uh, teacher is... Uh, primary think, teaching. Yeah, primary teaching. Young learner. Mm, young learners, yeah. yeah. And also in my country, teaching English, there is another group of teachers. So what do we call, you know, uh, I'm not sure that why now uh, you're in Indonesia, do you government hire like a, a we won't call native speaker, yeah. native mm -hmm. English yeah. teacher. Do for, you, for, for public, for public yes, school, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. not, not for the public school because they couldn't afford it. But for oh. a private school, yes, mm -hmm. they yeah, use but, it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is something I can also share. In my country, we have, like I said, it's a global world. So mm -hmm. right now we have a more English teacher, but maybe yes. it's not my kind. So which means that we have actually, they are a native English speaker teacher. But we, uh, right now we don't use the term. We call international, mm -hmm. uh, you know, international oh. English teacher. So we try to... So right now we try to respect every teacher who can speak English. English, yes. in, yeah. English is not their right. You know, yeah. there are more non-native speakers teaching English, yeah. speaking English. <laughs> so that's uh, gaji, interesting. Gaji, yeah. gaji guru di sini 30 juta. Oh, sorry. Iya, <laughs> yeah, gede banget. Di sini, di sini nggak sepertiganya, apalagi yang GTT. Tapi we are happy. I love to be yeah. teacher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I think teaching is really yeah. I, I was not you know become to begin a teacher my, my university. I I I major in journalism and advertising. Mm -hmm. But I think that teaching is so uh it's a creative job. <laughs> so teacher Ming, uh, just one last question. So your school is international school or um public school. school? But we have an international teacher here. Wow. Yeah. And also, like I say, we have a different student, you know, uh, like a, from other country. We have a Indonesia, America. So it's mm. a multiple, multiple. Yeah, yeah, multiple public uh, school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which means we, they don't need to pay expensive tuition. But there is one rule that in Taiwan, public school, you need to be resident, live in that region. You know, mm. you cannot just cross. Sonasi. Sonasi. Yeah. yeah, you need to be the region. For example, you stay, you live in here, in my school district. You can register in public school. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so that's some policy here. So definitely mm -hmm. we would like to share, okay? So, <laughs> so keep in touch. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much, Mrs. Winnie, Mr. Yes. Sahad, and guys. everybody, Mr. Rossi Trido, for your very uh, active participation today. Hopefully, you can join us next two weeks on another discussion. How can we find the information for the next webinar, Ms. Eva? Uh, we usually, uh, uh, oh, we have our uh, Facebook? Instagram. Yeah. How, how can we find a, find a group? <laughs> Instagram. We we have our Instagram. Maybe you can check. Uh, What's the name? What's the group name? Apa fe? Namanya fe? Instagram kita. Uh, so Saha, how do you come here? I mean, how do you get the webinar? Yeah, P dua B Yain Madura. So usually we we have we, you already join it. Yeah, I join. I join some. Uh, uh, some groups about uh, information webinar from around the world and mm -hmm. all is free and I'm so lucky 
I can just register and then get certificate for free. I think now everything is free. Free, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything is free because uh, we have it online. So it is so easier to manage, to organize. They want mm -hmm. to share their knowledge for free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. So yeah. That's the beauty of a pandemic. Yeah. Because the technology. Yes. The mm -hmm. Knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the pandemic, we are forced to use technology. So yeah. here so we are. At, look at the bright side. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Okay. They're so always... so share, share the, the, the group with us. I would like to yeah. come. Uh, I already time. write it down in our chat box. P2AB IIN Madura. It's uh, Indonesian? <laughs> yeah. No, we write it in, in English, but the names... Because this is the name of our institutions, uh, Pusat Bahasa Yayan Madura. Mm. But the informations all are in English. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I will join your group. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we, we will uh, keep, keep in touch. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank have you very day. much. Yes, Hopefully we can day. meet again next time. Yes. Have a Stay great safe. day. Yeah. Wassalamualaikum Take care. Take care. Wa See Take you. Care. Stay safe, healthy, and happy. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.